Hello guys and gals, Dr. Nails here with the third part in our series on transition and leadership and succession in business, family business, organizations, operations, whatnot. And talking about hopefully what we need to do or look to be doing as we look to the next generation of leadership, the next group of leaders, and how we look to successfully transfer to them the ability to grow what we've grown or built to where we're at. And the third part of this series, first we talked about transfer of trust, then we talked about letting go of our ego, which can be a challenge for many of us. Then the third part is being very specific and having some clarity in these transitions. Now, I'll be the first to admit when it comes to these things in my own life, own one business in Animal Medical Center and that transition of those things, I am not the best at it. I'm not the best at creating clarity in terms of transfer of leadership, success and succession and leadership and having things on paper as to exactly how this thing looks and works, exactly verbatim, word for word, who's doing what. As I always tell people, these are my self reminders, but in your organization, or your family, or whatever it might be, is if you're going through that, we have to do everything possible to create clarity on who is doing what and how this transition is going to look and work. And for me, the start of ours was when Dr. Ty partnered in, and he wanted me to put on paper what the next 10 years looked like. And I really struggled with that. To be flat honest, it irritated me. Um, because then I turned it around and I said, hey, you put your next 10 years on paper and how a transition is to look and work. I'm not sure any of us can, but the good news was it taught me to put some things on paper. And oftentimes when there is a business transition, whether it's a, a transition in ownership, a transition in leadership, a transition in generation, there are other people involved. I don't care if it's one, two, 10, or 100, but it's our opportunity and it's our duty and responsibility to be communicating these things to the people involved to create some clarity for them. Because I've been involved in so many business transitions and I've been involved with a number where there's a lack of clarity and a lack of communication and I'm involved in an operation and everybody outside is in the dark and they don't know what's going on and that creates anxiety and fear in them. There's always scuttlebutt, there's always gossip and talk, and there's that chatter of what's going on out there. And when we're not able to create some clarity for those people what's taking place in our operation, it creates that anxiety and fear, and you stand the chance to lose them because they'll go somewhere where there's stability and no fear, and they know what's going on. So it is our opportunity and responsibility to create some clarity, not only within the leadership team or the family, but throughout the entire organization, and they deserve to know. I grew up with a father that farmed until he sold out in 1982, and he became a banker, and the bank he was involved in got bought out, I believe it was three different times. I was a kid, and I remember the, the transition pain it took on him, but then infiltrated into even myself as a child. And so when we deal in these operations, I tell people, hey, you have workers here that need to know what's taking place because I can tell you as a child that went through it, the child of the father that went through it, their kids are feeling it. And we need to think about it globally, family perspective wise, every, wise everybody that's involved is it runs deep. And we need to put things on paper as best we can and who does what, how, when, that's very fluid, make sure everyone knows this can change but how are we can create some more clarity for the leadership team and for the entire organization will, will make us better. It will reduce some anxiety, some fear, the questions of where are we going, what are we doing. Uh, when we can answer those questions to reduce those things, the operation will get better. The organizational health will improve. And if we don't, the organizational health will go backwards, which is the last thing we want to have happen in a challenging transition time. Hope you've enjoyed this information. 
email us, text us with any questions or comments. We'd love to hear from you. If you like this information, click subscribe here and we'll see you next week. Cheers, amigos.